Hi, I'm Christina Applegate. And I'm Jamie Lynn Sigler. And this is Messy. The following message is brought to you by Novartis. Since partnering with Novartis, I have been thinking a lot about when I was diagnosed with relapsing MS. I kept it a secret at first, and that robbed me of the support I really needed. I finally found the courage to open up about it and quickly learn the importance of speaking up. That means making your voice the loudest in the room. You have to find an MS specialist who's the right fit, who makes you feel seen and heard. It's kind of like dating. That's why I partnered with Novartis to create a three-step guide to inspire others to own their RMS journeys, recognize their needs, and find a treatment that works for them. Learn more about my story at reframingms.com. Hi, everyone. Today, we have a very special guest, the Robin Roberts, co-anchor of Good Morning America and the president and founder of Rockin' Robin TV. This was definitely one of our favorite conversations, not only because Robin Roberts is so incredible and so loved and beloved by so many people and so honest. She was the first person that I talked to about my cancer and her cancer and now this. And she and is our just, messy podcast. And messy. So, she's our she's an honorary messy member for sure. She is a messy, beautiful mm-hmm. member. We love yeah. you, Robin. We love you. Enjoy. Well, thank you so much for doing this. You're so much, you're so like forever part of this journey with us. So it means a lot. I cannot tell you the tremendous response from our conversation. I'm telling you, both of you, I've done a lot of interviews, um, sat down with a lot of people. I can't remember the last time and the breadth of the responses from people who have MS, from people who have family members who have MS, from people who don't have MS, just all of it. So thank you. I know that was not easy to do. People think, oh, it's so easy to go public. It's not. No, it's definitely not. You know more than anyone. I think I think we told you in that moment. And if we didn't, we'll say it again. It also a lot of that came from the space that you set and the, mm. and the the love and genuine openness and curiosity and just love that you have and that you thank emanate. You. So thank you because you well. made that thank a you. very safe place for, you know, a, a, a wonderful and like you said, meaningful conversation. That was my goal. Always. I'm going to pass it to Christina because she always so you all do the, the same. Question. You all do the same for me right now. Oh, yes. We are 100%. We're turning the tables. I Oh, that's the name of my show. My Emmy uh, award winning show. On Hello. Plus. Turning the tables. Woo-hoo-hoo. There you go. Well, we're yeah, we'll turn something on you. I don't know what it's going <laughs> to be. But um, one thing we've we've started to do that seems to be like kind of a, a fun, interesting little introduction to our people is we always ask who's, who was little Robin? Like we just interviewed Jean Smart the other day. And she said, she said, little, little Jean wore saddle shoes, you know? And it's like, all of a sudden it's like, you get to paint your picture. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to tell you, but, but like who, who was little, who was little Robin? No, I want to know who was Mitch. After listening to Mitch, that, yes. I'm just gonna, goodness gracious, I, I don't know who I that man is, but I we're gonna, know. We're going to have him on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, who is, that is such a great place to start. And I've been thinking about little Robin lately. Oh. I don't know why, but I, I, I have for some reason. And little Robin was this pigtailed, big eyed little girl who really had no fear when I look back. Uh, Being the youngest of four, I benefited from three older siblings who went through the gauntlet. And so by the time I came along, my parents were like, whatever. (laughs) And I really, I truly benefited from that and heard them, my older siblings, we could do that. And I just would like smile. And I was told how 
at home, I could be a terror. But out in public, oh. I was such a little darling. Even then, I wanted the public to like me. Oh, did you, did a... you know you were being manipulative? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was so innocent. Come on. No, I, 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 I had no I idea. No, I know. Being, being that way. But no, I, I just really, I, I look back and, you know, my dad being in the Air Force, and I'm so grateful to my mother and father. They laid such a great foundation. We traveled all over the world, lived for a time in Izmir, Turkey. And I can remember just being, going out on my own with Turkish kids I met and barely knowing the language and not being afraid. And 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 I'm just so, I just look back at that time with such awe. And my mom said something and I told her if she was ever interviewed, when she was interviewed, never to repeat this. She said that I said as a child, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to be rich and famous. And mm. it sounded so shallow to say rich and famous. But my mom remembers distinctly I, I'm, I'm saying I, saying that. And I don't feel that's what I am now, rich and famous, because that's that. But it's like, even as a child, I had these big audacious dreams. And I didn't know what it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a professional athlete, but that little thing called uh, ability that you got to have to have. <laughs> um, I had the heart and the desire, but not quite the ability. I played in college, but that's about it. What, what did you play? I played, oh, okay. What do you think my scholarship, my athletic scholarship? What do you oh, think? Okay. What do you think? Come on. Dun, We're interviewing dun, you. Dun, 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 dun. Lacrosse. Nice. But you said basketball, but, lacrosse. Yeah. It was tennis. A lot wow. of people oh. basketball, but actually my scholarship was tennis. I did play on the basketball team, but it was a, a tennis scholarship. Oh, oh also, yes. I was the state junior bowling champion of Mississippi no. at the age of love 12. It. No, I love it. Come on I now. Love it Ooh, so you, much. You're getting all this stuff out of me. Uh, so I was you athletic. Still the I lanes? Was, <laughs> oh, no, no, <laughs> not anyway. No, once you, once you, you know, you peaked at 12 years old playing, you know, bowling, you, you know, you, know you, you can't go back. You can't I, go I back. I have my own ball and shoes. Oh, challenge because, accepted. Challenge because accepted. Of poop. <laughs> no, because of poop, Robin. Oh. Because of all the poop. Oh. <laughs> In the balls. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm okay. But no. Oh. Could you imagine me now trying to bowl? I'd be like, rup, 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 fall over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll put the bumper guards in. Yeah, yeah. just getting me have, down there. No, I would have like the beef jerky. And yeah. just, oh I was, my god! Ooh, I was a true bowler. Yeah, and you had the little guard. Do you have the little oh, guard? Oh, and the, oh, absolutely. The and wrist the, guard, the powder. Uh huh. You know, the, or the little bag, the little bag yeah, too. Little bag you, of powder. You, yep. Yeah. Wow. Towel. Shine it up. Yeah. Shine oh. Up <laughs> Oh, I would take my ball home and I would shine it. And wow. I had the white, the white tennis, white bowling shoes, a little point, point me. Oh my wow. God. I joined, I joined my high school bowling team as a dare and I loved it. It was the best time. I thought it was like, I was going to hate it. And my friends were, you know, making fun of me and it, I had the best time. I it's loved great it so sport. much. It went. How'd you it do? Was... What was your highest score? Oh God. I, don't... I was over 200 and oh. that was enough for me. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It Respect. was a great time. It was a great time. How about you, Christina? High score. <laughs> 175. Hey, now. No, oh, hey, hey. No, you know? I, I could never, I could never break the 200 for some reason. Oh. I'd get in my own head. But I, my form, come on. Like it was like, I as well, if you're a dancer. People would, people would prepare yes. for like complete glory. You know, when my arm would go up, right? It would go up and then it would just be like, one, <laughs> two pins. Doesn't uh, matter, true showman. So you were always ambitious, uh, confident. And, you know, I I love hearing my own kids have these big, tall dreams because I think that that breeds confidence. I think it breeds just a drive, which I think is just necessary mm -hmm. no matter where you end up in life. So I'm not surprised hearing all of those beautiful qualities were in Little Robin. But what I'm, what I'm surprised is by is that as I got older and a fear crept in, why mm -hmm. was I like, you know, as a child, you're, 
you, you fear nothing. And then you start off on your career and you just think, oh, it's not going to happen. I remember trying to get my first job in television. I was thinking about this the other day as well. And looking back, I'm like going, I was just so like, I'm never going to get the job. And then when I got the job, I'm like, I'm not going to get the other job. And I kept thinking about that hill mountain ahead of me being taller than the mountain I just scaled. Mm -hmm. And I wish I could take some of that little Robin back. And I, I think I have it this <clears throat> as I have matured. I'm, I'm not aging, I'm maturing. And that. I've gotten to this decade. Good for you, because I'm aging. <laughs> <'Cause you are. laughs> that, it's it's all how you phrase things. Okay, okay. Because you you have not changed. I've known you what twenty something at years least. at at least at least. The, the woman people. The woman has not changed. Uh, yes, oh. it's incredible. Bless your pee picking heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you know it's it's. Heart. I think that's, unfortunately, nobody is, um, you know, spared from that little fear friend that creeps in and the doubt. But, you know, I think that with perspective, like you're saying, when you, I don't think it's um, surprising that you, or for any of us, we all get to stages where we look back at our childhood and we have, give ourselves a lot of grace. And we also want to connect back to that, like, uninfluenced being um, and to, you know, and also a time to like see how far you've come because, you know, there's so many things that we could talk to you about on this show that would be relevant to what we do here on Messy. But Christina were, and I were talking before you came on and I, you know, we have so many people different types of people that listen to this for a myriad of reasons, you know, obviously the MS community, the chronic illness community, you know, people that have, you know, suffered with their health. We also have a lot of caregivers that listen to try and understand what their loved one might be going through. And, you know, and you have the very unique experience of being both, you know, a patient and a caregiver and yeah. for the sake of the way you share and the the relevance, like I said, of what people listen to and why they listen, would you take us on that ride with you and your beautiful wife and what that has been like? Well, thank you. I tell you what, I, I thought I'd never say this, but I'd much rather be a patient than a caregiver. I I am. Oh, my gosh. And so I can understand caregivers listening uh, to this podcast because you just feel helpless. And, and I'm so grateful that my wife is doing so much better. I'm so um, glad. Her her journey with breast cancer has been um, much more difficult than we anticipated and a little more, a little different than mine uh, in 2007 when I went through it. And she was my uh, caregiver. And, but also I took notes from her because she was such a great caregiver. Awesome. Awesome. And so I just remembered some of the things that she did for me. I, I know you, you guys are probably the same way. Don't ask me what I need or what I don't know. I'm just trying, you know, as a patient, I'm just trying to get out of bed. I'm just trying to get to the next step. I can't, I can't articulate what it is. And she would anticipate my needs. She mm -hmm. would anticipate my wants. And I so, so appreciative of that. I, I can really, and, and people, I get more inquiries more caregivers reach out to me than patients. Wow. More caregivers want to talk to me about being a patient, not my caregiving role, but as a patient. And again, it goes back to when you're going through your something. And as my mama said, everybody's got something, whether it's MS, cancer, uh, divorce, unemployment, uh, your, your kids are driving you crazy. Everybody's got something. Um, and it's, what what helped me and always helps me when my something comes along is I don't think of it as the tragedy. The cancer was not the tragedy. If I didn't pause and say, okay, Lord, what in the world? Why are you trying to get my attention? What am I supposed to learn from this? How am I supposed to grow from this? And how am I supposed to help somebody else who might be going through this? So I do have that perspective as a patient and 
there is this kind of nod we give each other, especially the second health crisis that I had, myelodysplastic syndrome, MDS, a, a form of, of a bone marrow cancer. I needed a, a stem cell transplant. And when I, I meet another MDS patient, we just give each other the, the nod. Like we know what the other has gone through. And that's what's been so great about the two of you because you're walking a similar path and at different stages. And you just want to feel like, does somebody just kind of maybe understand a little bit because it's so confusing and it's such a roller coaster that every now and again, you just need somebody to kind of just, just pull you aside and say, I hear you. And that's what we all want. I don't care where we are. Yeah. We just want to be seen and heard. Yeah. And that's what yeah. I try to do, um, especially now as I continue to be a caregiver, but so grateful that uh, Amber's on the other side of her journey. Yeah, and so I read somewhere, a journey. That's a word that we're, that everybody uses now, mm -hmm. journey. Yeah, comes with its own backpack. <laughs> it, yeah. it, and it's full. Yes. It, it, yes. it certainly does. <laughs> that it does. Just wanted to take a quick break and share a word from one of Messi's advertisers. Since partnering with Novartis, I have been thinking a lot about when I was first diagnosed with relapsing MS. And to be honest, I was overwhelmed and in denial, and I didn't want to accept it. Eventually, I had to be real with myself, reflect on what was important, reframe how my diagnosis was impacting my life, and focus on how I was feeling. And I wish I'd started thinking about my needs sooner. It helped me get to a place of acceptance and find the right treatment choice for me. And I really hope others don't wait as long as I did. That's why I partnered with Novartis to create a three-step guide, hoping it can help people speak up and voice their needs. Get the guide at reframingms.com. Support for Messy comes from Lumi. I've been using my Lumi, guys. I've been using my Lumi whole body deodorant because I've been... <laughs> living in a hospital and uh, it's kept me fresh and clean. Nobody's uh, mentioned any smells coming from me and it's it's truly made me feel like I'm uh, I'm not living in a in a dungeon nonstop. Uh, it's, I, I'm in LA and you smell like a dungeon. <laughs> kidding. I love Lumi. If you don't know about it, you guys, they have a whole body deodorant, which is literally seriously safe to use anywhere in your body. You can use it in your pits, your under boobs, your thigh folds, your belly buttons, your butt cracks, even your vagina, your Sorry. feet. It's uh, created by an OBGYN who saw firsthand how normal BO was after being misdiagnosed and mistreated and it's clinically proven to block odor all day and control odor for up to 72 hours i love my beautiful mm -hmm. smelling vagina <laughs> thank you lumi thank you it's baking soda free by the way paraben free ph balance like we said for safe to use below the belt it also comes in a variety of fresh bright scents like clean tangerine lavender sage or toasted coconut oh and rose and rose, which you just mentioned, that's yeah. Great. I just tried rose today. I'm in love, and lavender. Can't get that in that. Lumi starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code. And if you combine the 15% off with the already discounted starter pack, that equals over 40% off their starter pack. Use code MESSY for 15% off your first purchase at lumideodorant.com. That's code MESSY at L -U -M spell it spell it really well I got you L U M E D E O D O R A N T dot com she wins the spelling bee <laughs> you know it's interesting hearing you say that because I I feel for my husband a lot you know I see his anger that he has for what I go through the helplessness he feels when he can't do anything about it. And I also feel bad that he only know Jamie with MS. He never got me before. 
you know, he never got to know. And while I do believe very much what you said, that there is a great lesson in this and a great purpose in this, you know, in the, in this journey for me, especially with MS, like I, I say all the time, I don't even want to know who I am without it because it's completely shaped me and it's completely changed my view of the world. But I, but I have a lot of grief around that and for him. And because I think he sees me struggle so much, he doesn't really take care of himself that much. Mm. And he doesn't focus on himself and what he might need. It's like such an afterthought, especially with also having little kids. And I imagine that a lot of caregivers can go through that. You know what, Jamie? That's what Amber taught me. Because she really insisted about me taking care of myself while she was going through it. And that is, yeah, and I really appreciate that. And she, when a lot of caregivers have reached out to her and she said, you need your support system. You know, your loved one has, <laughs> has a support system. As a caregiver, you need one too. And we had got a great group of friends who had like this grid of who was going to come in on the weekends. Because when I went through MDS, I couldn't be really left alone. And I had to be in isolation for a hundred days. Because and of so why? She, because of my my immune system, I couldn't I could not have a germ. I could not I had no immune system. I, my immune system was completely wiped out. And so I had to be oh very God. in a very sterile environment. And my friends would come in on the weekends to spell her. And they they, you know, they they worked amongst themselves and figured out uh, who could come in on which weekends. And so Amber had the weekends off. And that's what she taught me as a caregiver. And I'm so glad you brought that up. That is so, so vital um, that they they need their own support system. Absolutely. Because resentment can happen, right? It's oh. just so natural for that too. And that's my biggest fear. You know, and I I I try to have conversations all the time because look, I mean, we're a married couple. We've got fucking ton of issues, you know, aside from MS, but like, if I can like try we're and make this, go there. <laughs> of course, well, that's, what, that's, oh no, we're going there. Robbie, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I, I just don't want this thing to cause any more issues than it's already causing, you know, we've gone to therapy about it because sometimes it's felt like the other woman in our relationship, because it's like, wow, sometimes yeah. I feel like that's when he sees me, he sees somebody he has to take care of. And I'm like, no, I still want to be like your sexy wife. I still want to, you know, like, some, like he'll come today. I was putting together a desk, for instance, and he came in. He's like, I don't want you to hurt your back. And I was like, just let me do it. Don't worry if I get hurt. Like I, you know, sometimes I just you don't want to. Really, be you want to put? You want to put the desk together? I know, look, Jamie. I'm, don't guys, I'm, almost, I'm almost done. I'm almost. Done. Oh my god, no. girl! No, he can put the desk. Desk. No, That's terrible. where I draw the he's line. Not handy Jamie, at all. I draw no, he's, the he line would break at it. desk. He would break uh, it. Okay. Rufus. Yeah, sometimes I'll use that. Oh, you know, I had cancer. I can't do this. Oh, can you help me? You, know, you got to play that card. Every now and again, you got well, this. Oh, you, of course you got to play the Good. card. I take the I, parking spot. I take We, we don't board. take the pos. Okay, we have to preface this. We don't take the parking spot. We you're need right. the you're parking right. spot. You're right. You're right. To all of our other disabled folk, we're not taking your spot. We are using our allotted. Yes. By government, by rules spot. Mm -hmm. Because we can't park 20 miles away right you have to be right there that's right i don't i don't mind the fast track at the airport coming into <laughs> customs i don't don't mind that at all yeah. but and but also allotted but also i was gonna allotted. say i was gonna say my caretakers are are you know friends and the only thing i ever i get annoyed so and they know this i get like annoyed with them because like <laughs> And they and I can say it, and I love you, and she they know who they are. If they say, "How are you?" and I'm like, "I'm really tired," they're like, and they're like, they go, "Oh, I'm sorry," and I'm like, "When am I not tired? <laughs> like, we don't need to have this conversation. <laughs> like, please don't feel bad for me for being tired. Like, it's literally like the first thing of MS <laughs> symptoms mm. is extreme profound fatigue." Maybe I should just not say. Maybe That's I should why just I got be like, I'm feeling energized. Oh, no. She got me a hat that says, 
fuck off respectfully. <laughs> respectfully. I like what someone says. With all due respect. With all due and respect. They slam you. That's right. right. Slam you. With all due respect. Like <laughs> that just takes away whatever's going to come come after that. Oh my yeah. God. Well, I was going to. Oh. Go ahead. You. No, no, no. You go. No, ahead. because you guys, you're going to stay on this subject and I'm going to, I'm going to go. You know, my brain goes all over the place. So you guys stay here. Yeah, and then but I'm gonna, I, can you, are you okay, cross This is when we're, so you we're arguing. You got it? It's like an old Mary. If you feel couple. like you're going to forget oh, yeah. it, then you interrupt me. Okay. Um, I was going to say too, that because you have shared, you know, you have this beautiful platform on Good Morning America and you, because of who you are and because of your experiences, you, you shared really intimately and deeply and beautifully with America and the world about what you've gone through in real time. And we started that journey with you. Mm-hmm. As we're here and messy, because even though I've talked about having MS, I've never talked about having MS in this way. And, you know, Christina knocked that da- that door down for me and I will forever be grateful. But have, have there ever been, because this journey is also new for us, has there ever been moments for you where you wanted to keep more things private as you figured it out and felt like you couldn't? Or was there any con- con- you know, feeling conflicted about it? Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes to everything you said. And when I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2007, I was working with, working with the Diane Sawyer. Oh, mm-hmm. she's my ride or die. And she did not want me to go public. Wow. She really, really didn't want to because she wanted me to take care of me. Mm-hmm. And she knew that by going public, um, that it would, I would have to then fulfill the needs of so many other people who would be reaching out. And she just wanted me to see. So selfishly, she didn't want me um, to say anything. And it was my dear mother who said, make your mess your message. She said, hon, yes, uh, you have breast cancer. Yes, it's an aggressive form. Um, You're going to lose your hair. Uh, You can't hide that. be the messenger for those people who don't have the platform that you have. Show them what it's like to live with cancer. Show them. And I didn't want to do it. And, and initially, it wasn't like I said, oh, by golly, you know, I'm going to. No, I and I didn't for a while, not until I knew exactly, you know, that I needed surgery. I knew the treatment plan. I had everything in place. That's when I decided um to go forward and, and tell folks because being on national television and I wanted to keep working. Um, and I, how I remember it was before I said anything about losing my hair that I already had a wig in place and I hadn't lost my hair completely. I still had my hair, but my hairstylist who's been with me for 20 years, Petula, love her. She said, let's, let's do a test run. Let's, let's, let's go on the air with it one day. And I did. And the reaction from people, and it, it looked pretty much like my my anchor do, a little flip, but it, yeah, it was the wig. And I was just startled by how many people uh, were reacting uh, reacting to that. And then um, it kind of it, it kind of made me say, okay, um, no more test runs. Be in the moment when things feel right. Share it. If they don't don't. And there were things that I, I, I didn't share, but I, I was really grateful that I had such a wonderful support system. And my mother's saying about, there's so many people, look, come on, you two. There are people who have what we've had and have, who have it so much worse than us. Yeah. And I don't compare despair. I'm yeah. not one of those that, oh, you know, yeah. and, and it startled me that um, that my doctors would say that they would get calls when people knew because I had my doctors on to discuss things and I was doing well. And people were like, I want what, you know, uh, you're giving her something like there's some like celebrity treatment plan yes. that only celebrities get. And my doctors are like, no, Robin is doing everything that I'm doing for you. Um, because I was an athlete, I was able, uh, uh, you know, it didn't prevent me from getting sick, but boy, did it help me fight it because I had that yeah. athletic mentality. My, my doctors were my coaches and the treatment was the game plan and cancer was my opponent. And I was able to approach it like that. 
but no, it was not, it was not easy. And this is what I've said to, to uh, why I was so grateful that you all sat down with me and shared as much as you did, because I know it is not easy to do, but then I don't know. And maybe you can tell me how it's been for you since I know that once I did, I remember I, I held back and I remember distinctly that morning I went on the air with Diane said I had breast cancer, was going to go have my uh, surgery. I slept like a baby that night. It was the first night I had a good, because I did feel I was keeping something bottled up. And now that it was out there, I wasn't hiding anymore, even though I wasn't technically hiding, but in a way I was. Don't you feel the freedom? And, and especially, Jamie, because you, for so long, until, as you said, your girl came along and kicked the door down. You, and that's and that's and that's somebody's right. Yes, it's, it's, you, sure. there's right. not one size fits all. You you just figure it out the best you can. We also don't want to be the grand marshal of that parade. You know yes. what I mean? It's like oh yeah, you come out and now you're the grand fucking marshal. And yeah. now now what? And I think that's where we're trying to kind of burst that thing. Because you and I know, Robin, because we had it around the same time that we've got to go. I'm going to, you know, I'm the grand marshal. I'm the cancer grand marshal. And like, and at some point you got to feel like, you know what, people stop it. Like, let me, let me be, let me grieve. You know, can I, can I tell you something since I came out with Amber we have asked, we have been asked to be the grand marshal of every <laughs> gay pride parade in America, <laughs> literally. And I'm like, thank you very much. But no, but no, thank you. But, but I'm not kidding. We've been asked. That's really hilarious. But, but, yeah, but you're, but you're absolutely right, Christina. And yes, there, there, there is a perhaps responsibility. Uh, it's not a burden. It's a responsibility when you're a public figure to, uh, be able to speak for those who have what we have and mm. they don't have the platform. But let can we just can we just can we just choose? We don't have to do right. everything. And sometimes I'll be asked to receive an award or something for whatever. And I'll go, look, I know there is somebody. I mean, thank you very much. But I know you can find someone else who is just as deserving, if not more so, who may not be on Good Morning America, but they still are deserving of the recognition. And please, please. Please let them have it. Yeah. Well, you know, for Christina, she was kind of outed be because somebody posted. I was outed from my breast cancer, too. You were? Yeah, yes, I was, walking, was. I was walking the halls of Cedar sinai and someone like either took a picture or something and said something's wrong with her and it got out. So I had to I had to get ahead oh, of it. I, I wasn't prepared. That. I had just had my double mastectomy and no one had Oof. known. And oh. I, had, I was six months into my treatments. You know, my treatments was not chemo and stuff, but yeah, and my surgeries and my journey, journey. Yeah. with my backpack and my trail mix. And <laughs> I wasn't, I didn't want to tell anybody at all. I was like, I'm going to do this like privately. And yeah. yeah, so I was outed. So, and Robin knows that because she was my, my yeah, one, in, my this, first yeah. interview. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, I didn't know that. Uh, well, yeah. I remember that distinctly. I mean, that's how far we go back. But I also, don't, don't you get this sometimes that I'm not really, I'm not big on social media. But when you do go public and then tell me someone like they they think they're the only person that ever went through this. Why do they talk about it? And I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's like they, they want us to when we do. And then there are people that are like, why are you doing it? You act like you're the only one that's ever gone through it. It's but that's when you can't you just got to. And I even taught a uh, literally taught a master class on authenticity. It wasn't a master class on broadcasting or anything like that. They reached out to me and wanted to do something on authenticity. And I'm like, if, if, it's, if it's your authentic self to share, whether you're in the public eye or not, because there are a lot of people, um, I, when I speak, and uh, especially to a group of, of uh, for a cancer event, and I'll say, okay, all fellow thrivers, because I prefer thriver other than survivor, uh, thrivers stand up, let's let's see who's here, and they, they'll they stand. And I'll tell them, I'm, I said, you know, there's some people who um, also went through cancer who didn't stand up. And don't want to be recognized. And you know what? That's okay. You know, this, just just yeah. let everybody walk their own path. I didn't say I, journey. I didn't use the word journey there. I, I it's okay. Path. Okay. I so. love. I journey is my new favorite thing now. I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to use it in sarcasm for the rest of my life. Oh, oh no! Sorry, folks. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, journeys are beautiful. 
Yes, I love that you yes, said the word authentic because that's what I feel like I'm in the uh, I'm stepping into finally. Be and it's through this whole process doing it with my girl here because you know, I kept it a secret for all those years. And then even when I came out about it, I was still so careful of how I spoke about it. A, because I wanted to be like, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. And that wasn't a lie, but I didn't divulge any of the hard stuff. I think because I didn't want people to think that I couldn't accomplish or do or be hireable or, 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 you know, I think I was also just wanting to tell myself, tell the story that I wanted to live. And it's, again, not that it was completely false, but now being able to just talk authentically about the hard stuff along with the other stuff, right? it's, it's bled into every area of my life. I can't fake it anymore. And it feels Ugh. so good. Yes. And, it, yes. and it's, you know, even with like, I was like, I, I had full body chills when we were sitting in our interview with you when Christina said, I've been playing the part of Christina Applegate for the last 50 years and I'm done. And I literally was like, holy shit. I, I'm watching somebody live the dream that I didn't think was possible and I'm just going to absorb it as much as I can while I'm next to her. Because as hard as this journey has been for both of us and has absolutely unfair that it was for Christina to not have any time to process anything before she had to speak on this. It's also, she's so many of the messages that we get from people that listen to this podcast are so grateful for the place that she's in because that's Mm. what they can connect with. And she has so much power when she speaks about it. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. This show is very much my therapy. It is my place to share and work things out. Like Christina says, we always have to get things out to release the power, get it out of your mind so you can stop the stories maybe that you're telling yourself about things and you can get get maybe even a better grasp on reality. Let me ask you a question, Jamie. Yes, ask Only me. crazy people go to therapy. Nope. The healthiest of the healthy go to therapy. Everyone needs therapy. Everybody deserves therapy. Everybody can benefit from therapy. You can get better with therapy, with better help. Better help is entirely online. It's convenient. It's flexible. You make it suited to your schedule. You fill out this questionnaire. You get matched with a licensed therapist. If you don't like them, you can switch them. There's no additional charge. It is the greatest gift you can give yourself. So never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash messy today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash messy. Hey, messy listeners. This episode is proudly brought to you by Lola V. It's an award-winning hair care line founded by the fabulous Jennifer Aniston. We've been lusting and you know, like love in her hair forever. It's iconic. It needs no introduction. So apparently Jen got tired of, you know, the same old struggles we all face, choosing between hair products that work and ones that are actually good for us. And now she's solved this dilemma. Thank God. With Low Lovey, it is a clean plant-powered product for every hair type and texture. And here's a treat for you guys. For a limited time, you're going to get an extra 15% off your order. But let me tell you a little bit more about these products. Okay. Like I said, naturally derived, no silicone, sulfates, parabens, or gluten. I love the in-shower trio. It's the restorative shampoo and conditioner, plus this intensive repair treatment that will turn your shower into experience into like a spa. I use the intensive repair treatment like, I don't know, every other week. And I my hair is growing. It is thick. It is healthy. And post-shower, I like to use the glossing detangler and their hair oil. Their hair oil is so light. You can use it all over your hair. I, I style with it. Again, my hair looks silkier, shinier, maybe almost like Jennifer's. Wait, can I can I talk about it too? Talk? Oh my God, I'm sorry. I thought yes. I like it. <laughs> very much I, I so use the shampoo I, need, I just really I'm sorry the re, whatever the shampoo and conditioner that I have but the leave-in mm. 
changed my life. Now, I have all gray hair, which means when I, I dye it, you know, with the bleach to make yeah. me look like Kelly Bundy, because I'm still going to be there. Just kidding. I'm 52. But it's like pubic hair. Like, it, you know, the coarseness of gray. Yeah. So, so really I, I kind of look like, a, like an 80s rocker when it dries. But now that I've been using the leave-in conditioner, I look like a like a seventies rocker, not like an eighties rocker. I love. So this it's, working. it's working. It's, it's working. working. It's working. It's working. Well, unlock Jennifer Aniston improved hair at lolavie.com. As our loyal listeners, you will get an exclusive fifteen percent off your entire order when you use code Messy at checkout. That's fifteen percent off your order at l o l a v i e dot com with promo code Messy. Please note you can only use one promo code per order, and discounts can't be combined. And after you purchase, I'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you your hair will thank you support for messy comes from peloton so when i had heard of peloton bikes when it was just bikes before it was dominating the whole exercise world i was so excited because i was boring myself to tears in my little home gym on my really old spin bike with my cassette tapes. Yes, kids, there are things called cassette tapes that my spin teacher had made, and I would give myself a class. And I found out that there was this incredible thing called Peloton, and you were part of like a community, and there were people talking to you, and you weren't alone. And I was like, this is so for me. And I remember getting on it the first time and losing my stuff. I met Ramin Arzon, I met Cody Rigsby, I met Jessica King, and of course, the incomparable DJ John Michael, who makes every class to me that much more special. So it was like my everything, my obsession. And I had just like, I feel like I was trying to get rid of baby weight. And you know what happened? Bing, bang, boom. Healthier, had more energy, and got rid of some of that weight. So I'm obsessed with Peloton. And I'm even more obsessed with trying the tread because I have an old treadmill from probably 1845. And walking is really good for people with MS if we can. And I can't wait to do that because again, I won't feel lonely. I'll feel like I have a friend. So get yourself moving with Peloton at onepeloton.com slash running. That's Peloton at onepeloton.com slash running. And again, you know, mention us. Messy. When I was asked about sitting down with both of you, that was part, that's, that jumped out at me when I was told they're in different places and Christina is pissed <laughs> and she's going to talk about being pissed. Mm-hmm. And Jamie, as we know, Jamie, you're so sweet, and you're just you. You are, and, and that's that's who you are. And I could oh, see she's that a you... total a hole. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> but 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 it, but see, that's the beauty. That's the beauty of you two, because you because how Jamie, how you looked to Christina when she was when she was talking, and she was like, and you were like, oh my gosh, now I have permission. Mm-hmm. I have permission. To be not okay. I have permission mm-hmm. to say I'm not okay. And I didn't feel that way before, but Christina was sorry. giving you that. No, no sorry. What but, do you mean? Because that's no, so because, strange. I know because you know how many times, oh, you're so courageous. Yeah. Oh, the oh. courage. Oh, you have such courage. And I'm I going just, like, oh, I just threw up my in God. my mouth like four times. <laughs> I, I, you know, and I, it's, it's great that people feel that way and they say that and it comes from a good place. They it mean does. well. It does. But it's like, are you kidding me? Are you? Oh, my gosh. Uh, well, it's easier for us to be, quote unquote, courageous because it's easier for other people to understand and to accept. They'd much rather. And that's our thing. When we talk about when we ask, how are you? Do you really actually want to know the answer to that question? Would you much rather just hear an I'm fine? I'm good moving along. Mm-hmm. Or do you want me to say, you know what? Today sucks. And this is how I'm feeling, you know? And Breach. I see, I see you moving your yeah, head because no, you know no, what I'm no, talking right about. You know, no, no, you're, not, I can see what you, you're. Oh my God. I, you know, I just recently, in one of my great interviews, Elmo, because you know, Elmo 
posted about a few months ago, how how you doing? Just checking in, how you doing? Got, you know, just millions of people really feeling they could share with Elmo oh. of all people. <laughs> and they were just filling their guts. And it was something as simple as how are you doing? And uh, when I when I talked with Carrie Washington, she said she hates when someone says that. How are you? Because just what you said, Christina, do you really want to know how I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Or am I supposed to give you the I'm fine? And how many times? And I've tried now to say not to say to somebody, how are you? I say, good to see you. It's good to mm -hmm. see you. Because when it it is a it's it's a low it seems so simple but it's so loaded so when you loaded. ask somebody how are you when I would be wheeled onto the the set um, because I couldn't walk from my trailer to set I said to the crew one time and I and they're all my friends so they totally get my my humor and my my world and as I was going through this I said hey guys if you would do me a favor and not ask how I am. Like say whatever else you want to say. You can say you suck, and most of the time, that's what would ha would happen. Like crew members going like you suck, <laughs> disabled lady, you know, like whatever it was. But I was like, can we just not? I don't even. I can't because well, I'm not going to answer it. Also, you don't want to always be like. You don't want people to look at you with sympathy because you're the like big harp out. You know. Yeah. <laughs> So I just told him to tell me I suck or something. And then, you know, because of that question is like, oh, yeah, I don't even want to go there most of the time. Right. Yeah. I had the fear. Because I kept getting my something it was breast cancer and then something mm -hmm. else, something else. My parents, my father passed away, Hurricane Katrina. And I had this really tight circle of friends and I would call and I was like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to be that friend that when the phone rings and they see my name they go like oh gosh i didn't want to be that person yeah. you know like when because I, I i have a couple of relatives that when i see their number come up i'm like oh boy what's now i did i was fearful i was becoming that per now they never made me feel that way my right. friends never made me feel that way but i thought that that's what i was becoming and i was like oh i so don't want to be that person yeah, yeah. i had a girlfriend call me woe is me to someone else and that's something we've talked about on the show a lot is now I'm afraid. Now I'm afraid to talk about how I'm feeling. You know, like that that part of you that like, well, the societal part that says that women can't complain and we can't be vulnerable and we can't be all these things, you know, all these conditions that we have. But to have like a friend go to someone else, oh, she's just a woe is me. It was oh, like, wow. it was like, wow to my heart oh, yeah. that's so our hurtful. deepest fear and that's what you're talking yeah, about. you don't want to yeah. be the one whose phone is coming on and i actually hope that when i'm calling people they don't answer because i hate talking on the telephone but that's a whole other whole other episode but anyway <laughs> but there's also the flip of that too where i've had to say to my friends sometimes too i'm like guys stop calling me so strong and inspiring like i just want to mm. be funny or i just want to be like, you know, I, I want to be the th all the things that everybody else is, too. I don't want this to define me. And they didn't even realize they were doing that because they just wanted oh. to acknowledge. And I appreciate that. I just want to acknowledge this is hard for you. I want to acknowledge that you're pushing through. I want to acknowledge. And don't get me wrong. Sometimes we need that. You know, when mm -hmm. you live with a chronic illness and you and you show up each and every day, that acknowledgement is important. You can't just, you know, you need to sometimes have somebody say like, what you're doing is hard and I'm proud of you. But you also want to be like a 360, like fully 3D person. That's not just this one thing. And so, but those conversations are important to have. And I think that this, like I said, this whole process has really helped me be able to voice that with some of my best friends that I've been best friends with for over 20 years. Just saying, you know, being able to explain how I'm feeling because they don't know unless I say something they can't. Oh, I, I want to be crying in someone's lap all day long. Like I literally wish I had that, like to just cry in someone's lap and feel safe. And so I'm yeah. the opposite. I don't want to be told I'm all these things. I'm like, I want to be like my head, you know, oh. pet. I want to have my head that. pet. That means you need I know that, I, I need it so badly, yeah. but how do you yeah. like, do you, you, I'm because sure you have you a lifetime of that. Like you need yeah. that from, you know? Yep. Oh, 
You guys are gonna cry. But I do. I hate that I'm so far away because I just, I just, I, I actually was talking about this with my therapist earlier today. I, she was like, what do you think your superpower is, Jamie? And I said, you know, I think from when I was ever, from when I was a little girl, I can look at people and understand them. I have, I Mm -hmm. just, I can't judge people. It's just not in me because I just, I know that where everybody is the way they are because of so many different things, their upbringing, their conditioning, what they've been exposed to. And so like, I will, I'll never fault anybody for who they are. And I just, and I also can see in Christina, like, this is her chance to be like, stop. I need rest. I need help. I need love. I need support. And you have every right to ask for that. We all do. Robin, do you want your head pet? I'll pet your head. <laughs> I love that. I know. I was just thinking about that. I mean, I was actually visualizing, mm-hmm. you know, my head in someone's lap. And this, uh, you know, because it made me think of my mama. Yeah. I just, you know, it's just it like, does. there was. it's just, oh, it was just something... Because sometimes you don't want, there are no answers. And even mm-hmm. though, you know, especially, especially my guy friends, you know, they always want to solve things. I'm like, sometimes I just want to, I just want to blah, I just want to get it out there. I don't want a solution. There doesn't, I mean, just, can't you just pet my head? Can't you just shrug don't they my know, hair? Don't they know that we know the answer anyway? So <laughs> you're so right. We started with that <laughs> way longer before they knew the answer. Yeah. We've already we've solved it already. But they want so they want you. to. Yes, they want guys, to. It's a guy thing. But I I, I do with my with my circle of girlfriends. I feel that we can just blah, and we're not trying to to solve anything, and we just want to we just want to we want to get it out there. But I yeah. I know that it. But there's a real gift that you have, Jamie, in that. Um, it's just inherent in you to uh, want, and I think this is part of the reason why for so long you did not share as much as you have shared recently. Um, you you strike me, and I don't know you as well, and I hope to get to know you even better. I don't know you as well as Christina, but you 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 want to be that person. You want to be that person that's that's. I'll, I'll use the word that's uplifting, and I'm not talking yeah. because of what you're going through. I'm just saying yeah. that's just who you are. Yeah, yeah. And it's uh, and it's hard for me that I have to be in like the the other yeah. role a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But we we share a, a similarity in that. And my my family loves to tell the story. We we're living in Izmir, Turkey, and we would go to church Sunday mornings every Sunday morning. And there was a homeless person who was always there by the church. And every single Sunday, I take what my my parents gave me as as a offering, and I give it to this man. And every Sunday, he was waiting there for me. And I would just run up, and it wasn't that much. I don't even know what it was. But even at, I just remember, and it's it's funny how those things as a child um, stay with you. And I remember when my dad. Oh, he was just such a rock of our family. And he was the first to pass up my two parents. And I remember him pulling me aside because I was starting to do well. And he was like, and, and I love my siblings and I love my family. And they never asked for anything, but I, I love to give. And my daddy was like, please don't give all your money away. And he was so serious. I was like, daddy, don't, don't worry. Aww. I mean, I, I'm, I'm generous, but I, I got, I got some in my back pocket. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I think it's so, and that's why, you know, you have children and it's, it's just so amazing how those little things as children stay with us and are embellished maybe sure. as we get older. Um, but I, I see that similarity with you, yeah. Jamie. And that's, yeah. and that's, it's, but as I, I will, I'll, I'll put on my, my hat now, as you said to Christina, you don't have to be the strong one all the time. You don't have to make us all feel you. It's okay. It's, it really is. It's okay. It's, you don't, you, it's, it's okay not to be okay. And it's okay to let others, you want to be the one stroking someone's hair let someone stroke your hair in their lap Mm -hmm. you know please i'll stroke your hair james i know you will you have you definitely i know and i've laid in your lap 
You're probably the only lap I've laid in since I was diagnosed. The only one that that is wow. that has done that for me. I had a, a I took a girlfriend um, who had gone through some serious stuff this this year, and I took her to a hotel this last weekend. And um, you know, she's I mean, gone through more than than any of us could possibly imagine. Mm. I won't even mention what it did, what had happened, but anyway, I took her away for for a night to a fancy fancy place, and I ended up getting really sick in my stomach. Um, with my stupid stomach thing. And she just put her hand over and put it on my arm. And it was like this feeling of love that I haven't felt in, I don't even know how long. And like, she got me through the night. She was half asleep and I wanted her to sleep. I didn't want her to like hear me vomiting. I didn't want her to be woken up by me, but she just put that hand on my arm. And it was like, thank you. Like she gave me permission to feel like shit. And that's, you know, there's not enough of gift. that, you know? What a we gift. have a lot of power as people, you know, to it, to go both ways, but we, we really, and it can be with the simplest of actions. Like you said, just a hand in your arm, you know, mm -hmm. special. Bumbaya, malo, no, I know. Yeah. Let's hold hands. Gosh dang, it's Robin. <laughs> Well, can I get, can I just, uh, can we go in another direction for a minute? Please, absolutely. Um, in your illustrious career, what has oh. been, this is just a personal question I'm wondering, what has been one of the hardest things for you to cover and the one is one that's been the most exciting thing for you to cover? I'm going to start with the most exciting. Okay. Um, what has been exciting uh, are these, I know that our audience, um, they're not able to to travel as much as they would like. And going back from being an Air Force brat and living around the world and around the country, I want to take people on adventures. And last year, went to New Zealand and really made people feel that they were there with me. Even when I jumped off that building a thousand feet up in the air, I don't know I did why. That I, did that. I did that too. I did that too. You did? Oh, uh, what is it? Uh, live more, fear less. The, the, live more, yeah, fear less. And then you just yes, drop. Yeah, and yes. then you're like Peter Pan at the end. Yes. yes. You did that? <laughs> yes, Isn't I did. It you just talked about it the other day. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. It was it was thrilling. I Sorry love, to interrupt, but no, I just, no, I'm I like, love oh that. Oh, my God. I've never met anyone else who had done it. So that's very I funny. have. You're the first one I've met, too, who's done okay. that. Cheers. And I, I just love taking people with me and for them to feel like they're going. So those and, and going to Portugal very soon. And doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we already did a scout survey. I love, I love when people watch and they say, "Oh, thank you for taking us with you," and um, just giving them that moment, whether they live, you know, in Idaho or Iowa or wherever, and they, you know, they haven't had a vacation, and you know, they can't even remember when. Uh, that to me, that's that's that is that is exciting, and everything about saying good morning to America. Wow. I mean, I, I, I get to do my best to set the tone for the day for folks. And there's some days I do want to go like, Ooh, you just might want to stay in bed <laughs> out there. I don't know if you want to get up. I don't know if I should be saying good morning, America. Um, but I, I just really, it, it's, it's a, it's a phrase and nothing ever gets old. The ones that are, Oh, anything political. Yeah. I, I cannot, I do not, I don't care what side of the aisle they're on. I do not. I, I Those interviews just, I, they keep me up at night and my, and I, my stomach is turning and it's just not, it's not fun. It's just not, there's nothing enjoyable uh, about that. Um, so because I, of the reaction that you know that will come uh, either, either way. Yeah. Yeah. From the, re, from the, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because the reaction you're going to get, but also most times they know the answers even before you ask them the questions. Mm -hmm. You don't really get anything. They're just going to really say what they want to say. You don't really, you know. Mm. Um, and I rather talk to people um, who are going to actually share and actually, um, I don't know, just let me in a little bit. I like those types of interviews. You know, um, after I did the interview with with you two. And because of that interview, there were people that were on the fence about sharing. Regina King. Regina King sat down with me for the first time since losing her son. Mm -hmm. 
And that interview too, she said about grief, and it took her a while um, to be able to, to speak about her son, but she did so lovingly. And she, I love when she said about grief, she said, grief is love that has no place to go. Mm-hmm. And those, though, and I, I can't say those interviews bring me joy. That's not what it means. It, it, those types of interviews, like with you and like with Regina, uh, uh, they they fulfill my what I feel is my purpose, and that is to be a messenger. Mm-hmm. I really feel I was put here to be a messenger and to provide safe places for people to share their message, and and everyone has has one. So that's that's a joy. So I'm grateful that I'm at a point in my career that when I'm asked to do some things that just don't feel authentic to me. And I just know, and I, and I will say like, I'm glad this person wants to talk to us, but I feel that so-and-so would be much better at doing the interview. I don't think that I'm the one for it. I'm glad, I'm, I'm, thank you for asking me to do it, but I just don't think I'm, I'm the one. And it used to be, and you know, I'm sure you guys took roles early on that you wouldn't mm-hmm. want to take. Of course. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, but, Early but, on. But, but, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but as you got older and seasoned, you're like, you can pick and choose a little bit. And that's how mm-hmm. I've gotten too. I can I can pick and choose a little bit more on uh, the stories that I want to do. And I always want to do stories. And this is why I love yours. And I hate to keep going back to it. No, I like going back to the, our interview with you. I like the stories that I do to cause a reaction from people that leads to action. They react to what they've heard, and now they want to take action, yeah. whatever it is, uh, be, be it for someone else or for for themselves. And that's what brings me joy the most. I don't know if I could do what you do, because I wear all my inner thoughts on my face. <laughs> and if someone was really irritating me, I'd be like, oh. like it's happened to me where I'm listening to someone talking. And I had a friend once say, hey, your face. I'm like, your what? Face. You're like, you're, I'm just listening to someone talk and it's like, Bleh. <laughs> so terrible. I would be like the worst. You know, Whoopi, Whoopi was recently on the show and she said her mom used to call her after the view and go like, honey, your face. Yeah. And she's like, and Whoopi's <laughs> like, what do you mean? She goes, oh, when you were talking to so-and-so, Whoopi, oh, honey. And she oh my god, she mind. really is. She really she's is a barometer strong. of her. Oh my god, <laughs> you know exactly what she's feeling. I love That's- it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, Christina has a party trick. Oh, geez, oh, if no. you're oh, willing, no. I'm always up for a party trick. Do you want me to set it up or do you want to explain it? You Christina? set it up because right. I have to, I have to, I'm meditate. her agent. I'm gonna Just set kidding. this up. <laughs> okay, so she has this party I trick. Always wait, but I always feel like I'm. I'm going to fail. And now we're dealing with like Robin I know. Roberts. <laughs> I and, know. Well, and guess I what? Was... We can edit this out if we don't like it. Okay. <laughs> I get this wrong. Okay. So okay. Madame Christina has a gift where all she's going to ask from you. <laughs> I'm such a loser. She, all she's going to ask from you is your five favorite movies. Don't think too hard about it. Just the five first ones that come to your head. And she's going to basically dissect you off the top of your head, the ones that you could watch over and over and over again through your oh, whole life. Oh, oh, watch over and over again. Okay, so not like the ones that means, okay, uh, Titanic. Wow. <laughs> Did you like that reaction? Whoopee. Mm, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, um, coming to America. I'm trying to think of, it. oh, love actually. No. Yeah, that's a sweet one. I know you think I'm sucking up the sweetest thing. Okay. That's Amber's favorite, all time favorite. Um, oh, a number five. What is the movie uh, that I can see over and over again? Okay, now I'm going to be a little self serving. Love and basketball because I have a cameo and I do love that. It's a really good movie. It's a great movie. Great and I only movie. get like five cents residuals, so it's not really oh, helping man. myself at all. I haven't seen that one. Okay, you guys have to talk amongst yourselves for a second. Okay. This, this, okay. this one's. Okay. A thing. I was going to say Dr. Shivago. That was like the first movie I ever saw. Omar Sharif. Yeah. yeah. I was like six years old. And I just remember being in the movie theater and watching that. But I wouldn't want to see it over and over. Right. Again. Right. It was, it was good at that time. This is hard. 
You guys have to talk this. Oh, one's hard. Robin, you've stumped her. You've stumped. You've stumped me. <laughs> stumped me. Leave it to Robin Roberts. What, you had well, a well, Jamie, Jamie, uh, she's working on it. What does she normally do? What does she? What does she take from the five movies? So, so for instance, mine were um, the Goonies, um, old school Shawshank Redemption, mm. Forrest Gump, and so basically, she said like you have you this wanting to belong. You always have wanted to be a oh. part of something, part of a group. Like she could just sort of piece together the messaging from the movies and like, tell me about who I am and who I was. And especially as a child, she's really able to wow. tap into that. No, I did stump her. Cause those are, I even, I, when I think about it, that's really, I'm really all over the map. She's got it. I've got something. Okay. Let's go. Let's like you weren't convinced of your own hope as a kid. Told you that it was unattainable. Oh my that- gosh that your hope was like, nope, that's not going to, I will never have that. I will never have that. And, and it was unattainable. You can't reach it. I can just feel you like trying to reach for your, your hopes. And you, you doubted those things. That's one thing I got. Okay. Oh my gosh. That is so, oh, wow. Okay. Sorry about that. That no, it's, Oh, no, Robin. that really, really, really. Why am I paying my therapist? I could have just gone to you. You'd be a lot. <laughs> Isn't here's, it here's... incredible? She's incredible. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That really. Yeah. Did it? Yeah. Okay. Ooh, okay. Oh, uh, is there more? But wait, there's more? Because that one. No, that's it. That's oh all my I can God. get right now. I cannot tell you. Oh, and I, and I've been thinking about it again um, recently because various reasons, and just looking back, and just really grateful. Don't get me wrong; I'm mean, so incredibly grateful, and but I've been able to uh, the opportunities that I've been afforded, and the way I prepared for those opportunities when they presented themselves. I'm I'm happy that I had people that really helped me. Um, but yeah, there was this, um, as, as a child, even though I had these big, bold, and, and I said was was fearless and all those things, there was still this nagging, nag, just deep down inside, it's never going to happen. The, the proverbial, you're not worthy, why would mm-hmm. you, why would someone want you to do X, Y, and Z, why would you have a platform? Um, and I, I've been thinking about that because as you get to different stages of your, of your life and your career, and you, you're thinking about your, you know, your next chapter, um, I want to be able to, I still have hopes and dreams that have not been realized that are mine. And I am not going to rest. I am not going to rest until you know, that, that what people say, it's not what you achieve at the end of your whatever. Um, it's what you didn't go for. It's not, yeah. um, it is, it's those things that you didn't go for. You didn't try for that. You didn't, um, you, um, those are the biggest regrets. I have no regrets of anything that I, I shot for and was shot down. I know some things that I wanted to go for and I didn't. And I know what they are. Yeah. And um, I'm trying to convince myself for this next chapter, it's going to be different. And that helped me right there, young lady. Wow. That right there. Aww. Thank you. Got That's my shoulders so back. You got really. your shoulders back. I got my shoulders back. Um, there you go. Yeah. Because you 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 called me out. And when I say you called me out, you called you made me call myself out. Mm-hmm. You made me go deep and and uh, and uh, wow! I didn't know. I thought I w- I thought I was hiding that better. Gosh, wow! wow. But just from those movies. That's and incredible. It's, yeah, the, that. The, come on, that's a good party trick. It's yeah. It's ended. I've been in trouble for it many times because I reveal some things uh, about people that they don't love about me. So that's why I try to be very careful. Yeah, <laughs> but, but um, hey. That's but a that's gift. 
But that's, that's like what, you're you're just you're so intelligent, Christina, and you're so wow. insightful. Like just wow. the way that you you can your way your mind works. It's really amazing. I'm also an idiot. Well, <laughs> sorry. And that's why I like this. Yeah. Oh, you know, you know what my my question at parties? What is it that brought you joy as a child <sighs> that you're not doing now? What is it? What's the first thing when someone says, oh, what God. brought you joy? I mean, not happiness, not, you know, because you got an A. What brought you joy as a child? Singing. Coming into my house after school and the way it smelled and the fireplace was always going. No matter what time of year it was. Do you have a fireplace now? Yeah, but it's way down lots of stairs. Why don't you, why don't you... No, it was something, something about different. that house. It was about that oh. house. It was like, it was my, the house I grew up in and, and it was rustic and old and it had a certain smell and it, and there were no locks on the doors, you know, the way the door opened and the sound it made that it was, it was kind of stuck to the side, you know, and you'd have to push on it to get it open because it was wooden and, and there would be, the fireplace would be going. My mom would have the fireplace going and I love that. You're so good at setting scenes. I know. It helps how soft her voice gets. I know. How she's talking about this. You can't push open the door. Yeah. And my mother got to go. We had a dog named Red Eye and he would push it open. And we'd always yell at him, Red Eye, close the door. Red Eye, close the door. And then we also had this talking bird. And eventually he'd (laughs) he'd open the door and the bird would go, Red Eye, close the door. Red Eye, close the door. (laughs) That's so Another cool. I I know. Red I eye, know. close the door. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, what Robin, about you, Robin? Yeah. What about you? Oh, you know what? When I was asked that, what brought me joy as a child was playing tennis. Mm-hmm. At the time, I just started playing tennis again about four years ago. I went like 40 years without playing. Couldn't play all my childhood. Brought me, I mean, I would dream about being at Wimbledon. I was just, it's just all, and I, I didn't play. And then I thought about it because someone said, what is it that brought you joy? I started playing again four years ago, and I am that little kid when I get on my ah. bike, go down to Key West, go down to the public courts, get with the, the 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 teacher there, the pro there. I Amber even says the joy she oh. sees. And it's true. And I was like, why haven't I played all of these years? But um I just, I, it's just so, I, I just, I just remembered that because when someone asked me that originally, that was like the first thing that popped in my mind. And then I realized I hadn't been doing it and it's brought me joy again. I'm it's so broken glad. my wrists, but it's also yeah. brought me joy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, a broken bone heals stronger than it was before. So there yes, you go. Yes, ma'am. Oh. That's a, that is a know, scientific you know, medical fact. Yeah. And you know what? My backhand's going to be better now because yeah. I have a, I have a two-handed backhand. And my, oh. my pro was always saying I wasn't using my left hand enough. Well, since I broke my right wrist, I've had to use my left hand so much. It's stronger. So when I get it back out, I'm watch out. Court, watch out. You watch Show. out, ladies and gentlemen. Watch out. Yes, for Robin, Robin Roberts. Roberts. She's coming at you. Maybe yeah. I'll play in the, they have a senior circuit for tennis. Maybe that's what I'll do. Heck you yeah. don't have to have the if senior not, for golf. start it. Yes, I, I, yes. I love playing tennis. I'll come with you, but yes. I might sit in a chair. Hey, that's that's fine. Christina, I'm putting it out there. You're going to you're going to play tennis with Robin Roberts. What? I'm putting it watch out. Watch out there. for my backhand. I'm telling you that. But watch out for her backhand. backhand. You be kind to my girl. Robin. I will. Always am, Jamie. She's Always gonna annihilate me. So we end every episode if you would like to be on it with us. I pull a card from this little deck that I have with has inspirational quotes. And oh. then we end it, which I think we ended and our naked photos. That's right. And There's then we no all flash photos. each other. And then, yeah. Um, and Robin, then you and I are like, eh, we, our boobs. Um, well, well, anyway. yeah. well, you had me thinking that when you said head in the lap. So I was saying, yeah. hey, you know, so we're, we're, we're kind of going there anyway. All right. Okay. Well, okay. Let's go. And then okay, we sorry. end it. And then we end each episode by saying, and I think we ended it our interview as well, saying, and so it is because it's yes. just, okay. And so, so it is. As when we, when I'm done, that's what we will say. Here we go. Okay. I want to unfold. I don't want to stay folded anywhere because where I am folded, there I am a lie. And I want my grasp of things true before you. I want to describe myself like a painting that I looked at closely for a long time, 
like a saying that I finally understood, like the picture I use every day, like the face of my mother, like a ship that took me safely through the wildest storm of all. And so, and so, so it is. is. This show is executive produced by Christina Applegate, Jamie Lynn Siegler, and Allison Bresnik. Our audio engineer is Josh Windish. If you want to show us some love, don't forget to leave the show a rating or review. Hi, it's Jamie. Thanks for listening. I just want to let you know, I am a paid spokesperson for Novartis, but this podcast is independent from my collaboration with Novartis.